Good afternoon, afternoon from Chengdu. Before we get started, we wanted to wish everybody a very happy 2024. Yep, a very happy new year to everybody. Hope that you all were able to celebrate it in style with whoever you wanted to celebrate it with. We ended up taking a grab from Abud to get here because there is seemingly no public transportation between the major cities here in Bali. That being said, the two hour taxi ride only cost us 234,000 rupiah, which is just over 20 Canadian dollars. So it wasn't that bad at all. We're gonna switch it up today and take you on a live room tour to give you a sense of this site as well as what's in the room. And then we're gonna crack on and show you the rest of Changu as we see it. So this is Purnama Guest House Changu. And once you come through these doors, you're treated to quite a feast for the eyes. So you start off with this beautiful courtyard right here. As you come through, you got a kitchen on your right. And this seems to come complete with all of your basic kitchen needs, including a gas burner stove, but also a really good thing and a money saver for anybody who stays here is a water cooler. Always a lovely feature in places where the tap water is not possible. Got a fridge, obviously, just make sure you label your stuff and then you're good to go. two different chairs and a table available if you just want to get some fresh air outside rather than being cooped up in your room. On top of that, if you want a pet dog, there's a dog. And then we get into the room. As you can see, it is super spacious, very high vaulted ceilings, which is great for somebody like me. And so you have what looks like a pretty sizable, I would say probably a North American queen size bed, which is brilliant, comes complete with towels. AC, which is a must in hot countries such as this. And then on top of that, you have a sizable double wardrobe. I would be able to expand it normally, but we have our bags in the way. But I can assure you there is ample room for all of your stuff in here. On top of that, other amenities include the desk, which is always hugely appreciated. While I do enjoy editing from bed, I do feel like I'm more into work mode when I'm actually at the desk, so this is great. And then we come through to the bathroom. So you have obviously your elevated sink and quite a sizable mirror here, but as you can see through here, then you have so much room to have yourself a shower. The shower is sunken into the floor as well, so that means that when you have a shower, you're not flooding the entire bathroom. And then you've also got a couple of towel rails on top of that, so that once you're done with your stuff, you can just put it straight there. All in all, it's looking lovely so far. My understanding of Chengu is that it's really a place to just chill by the pool, go relax on a beach, and also that it is a foodie's paradise. And seeing as we're both pretty big foodies and we're into our coffee, we have done a lot of research on the best cafes and restaurants here in the city. So I think a lot of this video is probably going to feature us trying all that is offered here and we might sprinkle in a little bit of beach time. standard lunchtime fare, which is, of course, a smoothie bowl. So I've gone for a Sunrise Glow, which comes with pineapple, banana, mango, 
mangoes, mango powder, coconut, goji berries, a little bit of strawberries on top, and all that comes inside what looks like a fresh coconut, which is just incredible, really. So, very curious to try that. And that is then coming with a matcha latte, which looks equally delicious. I've decided to go for what they call a blue spirulina bowl, and that comes with banana, coconut flesh, of course, spirulina, coconut milk, and I think some honey as well. And then it's been topped with mango, chia seeds, coconut, and some cacao dip, which I'm very excited about. And I've ordered myself a cappuccino with coconut milk as well. So cheers, babe. Cheers. Oh my God, that's fantastic. You can taste the coconut milk and there's a little bit, I think, of cocoa on top, which complements it perfectly. Well, that was just delicious. You can clearly tell that with each of these bowls, and they're very clearly thought out by way of the ingredients, because they blend so well together by way of the flavor. But I think the thing that really surprised us the most is that with each of the bowls they come in, they're so deep. They are absolutely huge. So you know that even though you're spending like 55,000 rupiah, which is about $5 on each bowl, you know full well you're getting a substantial meal out of it. So, in terms of value for money here, yeah, it might sound a little bit more expensive than some of the other places you might go to in Bali, but you are getting your money's worth here. That plus also the warm drinks that we've had are very carefully crafted and just delicious. So, all in all, this has been a very good find. As we predicted, Chengdu has been about chilling and eating. So. We're gonna head to a local warang for dinner because we really enjoy eating traditional food and not just all the smoothie bowls and coffee. Fun as they are. And it turns out that there is one a stone's throw away from here, so we're gonna head there now. The other benefit to these warangs is they tend to be cheaper when you eat local authentic food compared to if we were to go to some place for sushi or pizza or burgers, which by the way, they do have plenty of those around here, but we figure we can get those back home as well, so. Traditional food it is. That's correct, Mel. So we ended up coming to a local warung, and this one is a bit of a one with a twist. So, as you can see behind me, then there are a bunch of different dishes that are available. And the idea is that you go up, you select whether you want rice or noodles, and then after that, you can basically pick and choose from any of the plates that you see behind me. And that can be vegetables, eggs, fish, meat, tempeh, tofu, whatever you're after, whatever seems good, then you can throw it onto your plate. However, it is worth noting that with each of those servings that you ask for, each of those has its own individualized price. So you could be asking for something that is an additional 5k or it could be 15k depending on the premium associated with the item. At the end of it all, then you go to the cashier, you pay the total amount that is on your plate, and that's you. As far as we went, then we went for a smattering of different things, which did include tofu, tempeh, vegetables, and rice. And for us, our combined plates cost 67000 which is just over $6 Canadian. Now that we figured it out, I think it's a real bargain, and I think we're going to come back here a couple of times. Good morning! We are so excited about where we're going for breakfast this morning. Possibly you a little more excited than me? Yeah, quite possibly, but it's still going to be an awesome place. So when we were doing our research on the various cafes and restaurants and things like that that we might want to go to, then we came across this one place called the Matcha Cafe and probably about 50% of the menu contains stuff, all including that wonderful ingredient of matcha. It's a 31 minute walk away from our guest house, so let's get going.
yogurt. What I loved about their menu, other than this stuff, is that combine matcha with like turmeric and make it into a latte, or matcha with chai and make it into a latte, and I just thought that that was really cool. After having tried one of their signature matcha lattes and loving it, then we took another look through the menu and saw a bunch of other drinks that are also laced with matcha in them. So, Rachel has gone for an espresso matcha, which was interesting, and I have gone for a matcha chai. I'm very curious to see how these all shape out. One cool thing about this place though, is that unlike a number of other places that do hot drinks, then this place doesn't charge any extra for a non-dairy option. They do their own coconut milk, which they are happy to put into any drink for no additional expense. It's also worth noting that for this place, whether it's hot or iced, then it's still the same price too. So that's kind of neat. Let's try mine. smell the spice coming off. This is good. Oh. Interesting. I was expecting for there to be maybe a bit more sweetness in there, but it is still really nice. Like, the, the matcha blends really well with the chai spices. And all in all, it's just a very nice drink. I'm not sure if I should mix this. I think I probably should, so... discovered last night was that there aren't many warums in Chenggu that we could see. There's kind of a higher concentration of pizzerias, burger joints, Mexican places. And so we're going to go back to the same warum. Nothing exciting because A, the food was good and B, it was a portal. about where we went for brunch yesterday but today I'm even more excited because we're going somewhere called Avocado Factory and I love <laughs> some avocados. As I'm sure you can guess much in the same way as with the matcha cafe we experienced yesterday which had about 50% matcha on its menu. This one has avocado running through pretty much the entirety of its menu. So let's give it a go, shall we? Absolutely lovely, quite rich, 
and yeah, all in all, just a very, very nice drink indeed. Well, that meal was sponsored by words such as, mm. oh, wow, delicious, so good, because it really was. With mine, it tasted pretty rich anyway, but then on top of that, there was like a spicy jam, which added an extra dimension to it, and then there was a little mayo as well, which threw in a different flavour. I think probably that is the best way to describe this menu. It's just so well thought out. They've just tried to make each mouthful just more and more complex and more and more exciting. Yeah, they've really curated the flavors. What I appreciated about mine is that not only was the guacamole and the mushroom delicious, but also then they had some like nuts sprinkled on top and that extra level of crunch really added dimension. And then they also had little tiny bits of lime flesh, which lime and avocado always go well together, but it was just the amalgamation of flavors that were all so complimentary. Super high quality food. The service here has been incredible. Yeah. Cannot speak highly enough of this place. And nothing here, in terms of our food, costs more than $7.50, which back home it would have been at least double that for what we ordered. Absolutely incredible. Definitely very cool coming in for lunch. Just leaving the beach after having spent a few hours there this afternoon we ended up deciding to sit on bean bags because as Nick has pointed out for no logical reason at all the bean bags are free but the Sun loungers cost 50,000 rupiah each so tell me how that makes sense <laughs> but anyway uh, we ended up sitting there, we ended up having a couple of coffees as well. Just enjoyed some relaxing time at the beach while everybody else frolicked and did their thing. Yeah, there were tons of people surfing, so every single stall that was there seemed to offer surf lessons. So this is obviously a popular spot to come and do that. But what this proved to me was that you don't need to go to some fancy beach club and spend a huge amount of money you can just walk down to any beach rent a sun lounger or put out a towel for free or sit on a bean bag for free grab a coffee a beer a cocktail a smoothie a juice at the local warungs and take a surf lesson or just go for a swim whatever suits your fancy basically and considering the fact that that rounds off basically our last full day here in Bali, which is a very sad thing to think about, then uh, yeah, it's been a very, very good way to spend it. Yeah, I can't believe that this is going to be the last time that we're at a beach for probably the best part of a week and a half, two weeks. That sounds so spoiled to say, <laughs> but I mean, the next few countries that we're going to, we're changing it up a little bit. Bali has been an absolute paradise and I think that we will definitely be back because there's certainly more of it that we didn't get to see that we want to explore. I think my favorite thing about Bali is that you can make it whatever you want it to be. I said this in one of our other videos, but like if you like waterfalls, there's so many waterfalls. If you like culture and history, there's so many temples you can see. If you want a beach vacation, you can do that on the cheap 
by just going to one of these beaches. I think that's just generally the appeal, like the fact that there is such a diverse range of activities and things that can cater to you, whether you're looking for something a little bit more of a sanitized, westernized experience or something a little bit more local and traditional, then there is something on this island that does cater to that. And I think that's why people love it so much. I think from our perspective, we had heard so much about how much everybody enjoys Bali that we did think it could have been a bit overhyped. But honestly, I think with our experience that we've had over the past couple of weeks, then I think it's lived up to it. It's been really, really good. So for now, we're going to be saying goodbye to Bali, but definitely not forever. Nope, we will 100% be back. But that doesn't mean that we're not excited about our next country which we'll be spending the next couple of days traveling to. As for this evening, then, considering the fact that the avocado factory meant that we could splash out a little bit more than we would have liked, uh, then we need to go cheap again. So we're going to head back to that warong which we featured in the past couple of nights. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.